We started out with 128 players and we're now down to 16 still standing. We're going into round four of the FIDE World Cup. And the game I'd like to look at is between Maxime Vachelegrave and Alexander Grishuk. So these are two big beasts still left in the tournament. This is quite a match-up. So this is the first game played today. And of course, this is played with a classical time control. It's only when we get to the rapids, uh, when we get to the tie breaks, that it turns into uh, rapid play. So classical time control, and it's the currently very trendy Gioco Piano. And, well, these, the move order here is very fluid, very flexible. Uh, this this position has been seen before. Uh, for example, in the game between Carson and Bacro from Paris. Bacro played Bishop B6 here. It's been played a few times. Um, but Grishuk played A5, blocking that A pawn and preventing B4. Knight D2. All very typical. And after Bishop B E6... Um, Maxime played bishop b5, so perhaps looking to trade and advance with d4. So after five minutes or so, Grishuk put the knight back on a7. Of course, white could bring the bishop back, but, well, very quickly, uh, Maxime decided to push on in the centre. So now we have a little trade here. And... Now, pawn takes bishop, so the knight is attacked and has to go back. b3, of course, if that pawn is taken, then the e pawn can be taken. Rook e8, so now white exchanges, queen takes. So we've got a near symmetrical pawn formation, but white has a little bit of initiative because that knight isn't so well placed at the side of the board. Queen is attacked. I guess black could play c5, um, but somehow it feels very committal to you know, leave these gaps here either side of that pawn. So instead, Grishuk played the queen out to a6. Um, and here, I guess, if knight takes, well, you can see that's why uh, a rook was played here. Um, perhaps bishop b3 and then rook takes knight. Maybe bishop takes as well is, is h3 is also possible. So Vachel Le Graf played b4. And this was exchanged, and now b5. So in... in Obviously, blockading this pawn makes the bishop look a bit silly. Um, if pawn takes, then queen takes, black is fine. And if knight takes, then, well, pawn takes pawn. Also, black seems to be fine with potentially a knight coming into b5. So, Vashelagarov played the bishop back to b2 to put some pressure here. And now things start to hot up because we have a, a very double-edged position on the board. You can see this bishop looking down to the king's side and this queen is miles away from protecting the king. There's also no dark squared bishop, which very often in these kind of positions will cover the g7 pawn. So things are hotting up and basically white's Queen side is dissolving. Of course, if white wanted to play for a draw, you could just trade pawns here. But Vachel Le Grave is playing for more, and he swung the rook across the board to the king side. And this does look very inviting with the bishop and rook trained on the g7 pawn. But he's given away a pawn uh, to get to this position. Of course, that is potentially very strong as well. Rook d8 looks normal to pin the knight, but the queen bounced out anyway. 
Um, if rook takes knight, let me see, then queen takes, yeah, that's a deadly pin. Um, I, I mean, during the game, I was looking at this position thinking, well, okay, it seems natural to play the knight back to e8, to remove the knight, to guard g7, but this is very, very unclear if white takes on f7 and switches the queen across. Just looking to power through on g7, and now you can see that you know the queen looks very poorly placed uh, on the other side of the board. Um, I mean, this is extremely unclear, but white certainly has fantastic compensation here. Maybe maybe just withdrawing the rook. Um, extremely double-edged position. I think these kind of positions where there are opposite coloured bishops, very very difficult to defend because you can never trade off the, um, this dark squared bishop. Uh, and it's always a problem that the dark squares for black. Very unclear. Instead of knight e8, Grishuk played the king to e to h7, just stepping out. So now, obviously, that's no longer... Whoops, queen, queen takes knight is no longer possible. And now, well, the way that uh, Vachy Le Grave continued the attack here is phenomenal. Um, this was... Well, just a really entertaining game, but so daringly played, actually by both players. So why is he played here? Well, if bishop takes knight, then we can give a check. And now, well, an incredible move. Rook takes pawn here. Um, and now, in fact, it looks like white is going to force a draw. Um, incredibly. And, and this is a draw. Now, this kind of thing would be very, very difficult to calculate, um, you know, with the players running uh, quite low on time, um, but very, very risky simply to take that knight and leave white attacking. Instead, Grishuk played knight c2. And then rook takes pawn check. King takes, and now an incredible move, knight c6. So both knights can be captured, but of course this opens up the long diagonal. Um, and with black's queen in Siberia, this is highly unpleasant for black to defend. Very, very difficult. So for example, if, if the queen takes the knight here, let's just have a quick look at that. Then queen takes, check. Bishop takes, and rook d1 is winning for white. So now we can see the point of Grishuk's move knight c2. It wasn't just to attack the rook. In fact, the whole point of this was simply to block the diagonal with knight d4. This is clearly what Grishuk had intended when he played knight c2. But the attack goes on, knight takes, bishop takes, knight. So at this moment, Vachy Le Grave is a whole rook down, but his attack goes on. It's possible to play knight f5 check here. That might even be better than the game continuation. This is just very, very unclear. But instead he played e5, also extremely dangerous. If, for example, knight d5 looks very natural, then e6, again, making sure the queen is cut out uh, of the defence, cut from the king's side, and just opening everything up again. In fact, incredibly, it looks like knight h7 is the best move here, with the idea after e6 to play f6. But this, you would have to be very brave, possibly very foolish to go into something like this because white still has a, a really potent attack here. Well, my computer tells me that it, it's possible to defend this position for black, but really you would have to be very brave to, to go in for this. You know, this move knight h7 is, is not obvious at all um, and it's certainly e6 looks like a terrifying move. Instead, Grishuk played more pragmatically. He played rook g8. 
and now a check, and 97. And again, various moves for black here. You could play 98, um, but white still has a, a very powerful attack. Grishuk basically decided to dampen things down, to calm things down. You know, he he didn't like the look of you know trying to keep an extra piece. I, mean, I don't blame him because you know this again. This is absolutely terrifying. <laughs> um, just a very unclear position. I think he was right not to go in for this because it's, it's, it's very easy for black to go wrong in a position like this. Instead, he decided to calm things down, hitting the bishop. So, yeah, he's once you start chasing this bishop, this is you know the key piece in white's attack. So, he basically decides to calm things down with queen here. Um, making sure that he's he's trading pieces in this position as things are under fire here. So black has to trade and now sorry white has to trade and now this is taken and now the players simplify to a draw. And well uh, rook and pawn endgame is reached, which is simply a theoretical draw. 3v2, of course. Um, Maxime tried for another 20 moves to, to press a little bit here, but Grishuk held the endgame very, very easily. Well, I thought that was a tremendous game, and you know, both players showed fantastic fighting spirit. Um, let me just show you one other game, or the finish to another game, very, very quickly. This was the match between game between Maxim Rojstein from Israel against Vladimir Fedoseyev from Russia. And here, well, it looks very, very unclear. It's, again, a very tense game. But here, Fedoseyev found an excellent move. He played e3, opening up this diagonal. Now, if that pawn is taken, so for example, queen takes then this bishop pops out and that wins material because knight takes, queen takes and that's that's a winning position for black. Or knight takes pawn and again bishop b6 is absolutely deadly and the king perishes there and in the game after e3, well, same thing happened. Bishop takes Queen comes in, another check, and now a winning move. Bishop g5, and this really can't be stopped satisfactorily. White had to give up the queen, but with only two minor pieces, that's a very easy win for black. And here, Rodstein resigned. Nice finish. So there we go. That was game one of round four. Game two played tomorrow. Um, there are still some really strong names in the tournament. Um, I guess the big surprise today was that Ivanchuk defeated Giri. I don't know if that's a surprise, but Giri, you know, much younger than Ivanchuk and, well, Ivanchuk, it was, it was a very uneven game actually, but Ivanchuk came good in the end. Um, other big names still playing, Aronian, Wesley So, Jabava, Wang Hao, Ding, Rapport. So, very, very interesting. Oh, and Boo against Svidler. Um, Svidler has a fantastic track record in uh, World Cup. So, let's see how he gets on as well. So, lots of stars still in the tournament.